Oh, cue the music. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Ryan and Ryan in here, and we are not talking about Christmas, man. March Madness is upon us. The NCAA tournament is upon us. And Ryan, how good is it to say that? After two years, we didn't get to say that last year, man. We are back. It's a strange year still, but hey, they're playing tournament basketball, man. We are. Well, fingers crossed. Everything right. goes according to plan, but um, there are protocols in place, obviously. We've already had apparently some officials sent home. I don't know if you saw that. TV Teddy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an exciting time. Um, I've, I've said it every every day of my life that this is the most the single most exciting sporting event of the year and uh the fact that we didn't get it last year like and if you think back you go back to um the week of the conference tournaments you know michigan for example was getting warmed up for their first round game and then they got pulled off the floor and the you know less than a day later the, the tournament was canceled so um it's it's really exciting to get to get back into this um Looking forward to it. Absolutely. And it's a good time to be local as well. We got two teams in the tournament, which we have had for a while. One is in number one seed. One barely got in. So uh, we will go over those. Just a few credentials. In case you didn't know, in case you just stumbled across this video or the audio, Ryan Slocum here, longtime sports reporter in Michigan. I've been to and covered I don't even know how many Final Fours. I don't even know how many Big Ten tournaments. So I've covered these teams from top to bottom uh, for the last 20 years. Ryan Ross is here. He is the video asset manager from the Detroit Pistons. So we got a little bit of basketball knowledge be between us here. And we're just going to give our thoughts. We're going to go over our brackets. Not every single pick, but we're going to give you the locals. We'll give you some sleepers, our Final Four and all of that, just a brief overview in case anybody gives one single rip, you can check this out. So here we go, Ryan. Let's start with Michigan State. The big program, one of the blue bloods, you could say, they had a strange year, man. No Duke, no Kentucky this year, almost no Michigan State. They are in a playoff, play in game. On Thursday, they take on one of those other blue bloods, UCLA, for the right to move on to play BYU. Both will be an 11 seed. First of all, a lot of controversy, strange. Boy, they should have been in. They should have been in three top five wins in the last two weeks of the year to get in. They play a UCLA team, though, that is struggling. They lost their last four games in a row. How do you like this coming out for the Spartans? they've been such a hard team to predict this year. They've yeah. been so up and down. So Jekyll and Hyde, right? Um, made a great run to close out the season, you know, with some huge wins. You mentioned it, Illinois, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, three top five teams. I think they were all – they really – I think I if Ohio State was eight or nine. They might have been further down. But they've all been top five teams at some point during the season, one or two seeds in the tournament. Um but they've also looked very bad with some 30-point losses at Rutgers, a 30-point loss at home to Iowa. They were 4-9 and nine at one point in the Big Ten, so, and they looked dead in the water. So it, it's hard to predict. They didn't look good in their Big Ten tournament game against Maryland. Um, so, you know, which team shows up? I, I think you nailed it, though. UCLA has just been terrible uh, for the last month or so. They just – they don't even look like a tournament team. So I think Michigan State wins that game. I think they win it probably by double digits. Wow. And then I think they they uh, they take on BYU. I think they beat BYU and then lose in the uh, second round of Texas. That's where I have them. Kind of yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. It, but this team, as you said, has been so strange all season. You don't know which team is going to show up. You have no idea if it's the team that beat three top fives, if it's the team that played Michigan the first game or the one four days later right. that played Michigan, which one is going to show up? One thing they do have, though, and uh, I hate I, – it's so cliché nowadays, but uh, January, January, February, February is oh, – I mean, it's ridiculous, but at the same time, this dude mm -hmm. is awesome in the tournament. He knows how to coach in the tournament. 
and I don't have the exact number in front of me, but at one point at least, his record in the second day of a weekend, and now this time with the play-in game, he'll have to play three games in that stretch, Mm -hmm. but his record in the second day of a tournament weekend is just insane. It, 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 at one point, it was like 13-2 and two or something. I mean, it was stupid, and it still is great. So if they do get past that first game in UCLA, there's no question that they have the ability, and they will be coached up well enough to beat BYU, and I have the same thing. I have them winning both of these games. Um, I, I, they have played better, obviously, because they knew the last few weeks they had to win to get into this tournament and they absolutely yeah, they did that and they and they did it and they went out there and won the games they needed to win to get in but you do see them uh falling there not making it to the second weekend you got them bowing out in the second round well you got me nervous now because you just talked about how how, how well they play in the second round like usually and you're right usually if michigan state's going to get bounced in the first weekend it's in the first round yeah you know, you think back to George Mason and you think back to, was it Nevada, I think, that took him out one year? Nevada took him out as well. Yeah, but if they win that first round game, even if they're a middling seed, um, they usually take care of business in the second game. So, I mean, I don't, of course, the difference now is it'll actually be their third game because they have to play the playing game and maybe that's right. the difference. Right. But, you know, honestly, I mean, you got to give the devil his due at nine final fours. He didn't do that by accident, but. I would uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they if they got bounced in that UCLA game. I think they'll win. I think they'll win handily, just mostly because I don't think UCLA is any good. But it wouldn't shock me if they came out and laid an egg and and bowed out gracefully. But it also wouldn't shock me if somehow they ended up making it to the second weekend. That's just kind of how they've been all year. We are talking about first four participants, which Michigan State will be. In the previous eight years, the first four participants went on to reach the second round before being eliminated. Three of those did move on to the Sweet 16. So three times those first four have moved on. And then, remember VCU in 2011 went all the way to the Final Four somehow. So I will be absolutely shocked if that happened with this team being how Jekyll and Hyde they are. But yeah. First four programs have made it into the Sweet 16, and if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Tom Izzo and Michigan State. Here's something well, else on them. Go ahead. Real quick, Ryan. though, Ryan, I think there is something to that, though. Like, if you think about when since the first four is brought in, there's been so much conjecture the next day or right after the brackets are revealed about how – and they said it about VCU back in 2011 or whatever it was. Right. They shouldn't be in the tournament. Such and such should have made it in before right. them. But you have to remember – Those teams being on the bubble were playing tournament basketball for a couple of weeks. Their their Mm -hmm. tournament lives were at stake. And Michigan State's been in that situation since about third week of February. Against one and two seats. Against one and two. (laughs) Playing playing the gauntlet, running the gauntlet of the Big Ten and all their, you know, we'll talk about that obviously as we go. But so there's something to that. and, And it's an interesting stat. And we'll see how it plays out. Here's something else for you. They, you know, under 500 in their conference, but this is an insane conference. You know, as you said, they were 4-9 and nine at one point. 45 teams have had losing conference records to get at-large bids since 1985. 23 of them have won a first-round game. So that would be beating BYU there in the first round. Only six of those, though, in this modern era since 85, have gone on to reach the Sweet 16. So those two stats kind of play against each other, um, where only six of those have gone on. But then again, when you're looking at that conference record, look at this conference. Nine teams are in the NCAA tournament from the Big Ten. So this isn't like it's the whack or anything like that (laughs) when you've got an under 500 record. So that's it for State. We both have them moving on to the second round. We both have them bowing out to Texas. As for the Wolverines, another huge story, possibly the biggest story in the country because we don't know what the heck is going to happen with this team. Isaiah Livers goes down. Obviously, I don't think he's their best player. I don't think he is their most important 
player. He's their but, leader, though. But he's their leader. He's their senior, and he has been to the championship game in his career. Huge loss. I think if he's there, I got him going to the Final Four. I don't see sure. any – I have no problem taking them to the Final Four. I don't think the road is that tough. Even though it's not easy, I don't think it's that tough. I think a full-strength team makes it without it. I think they can go Elite Eight, but, man, if he's not there, I don't know if they can make it all the way, Ryan. No, I agree. And Just walk it back a couple of weeks before, not only before Livers. Well, Livers obviously was hurt, but he wasn't – he was playing through it. Mm-hmm. Because apparently the injury originally happened way back in uh, New Year's Eve against Maryland. Right. But uh, if you think back to prior to the Illinois game when they got whitewashed on their home floor by the Illini – this team was looked at not only by their fans and by themselves, but by almost any any pundit that followed college basketball. This was, along with Baylor, these were Michigan and Baylor were the two teams that stacked up the best against Gonzaga, and yep. were those were those three teams were the prohibitive favorites to, uh, you know, to win the national championship, and they were playing like it. I mean, they were curb stomping people. I mean, there, you talked about the Big Ten gauntlet. In Michigan, but back in January, they were they were rolling people, and and they weren't all bad teams either. I mean, they were most of them were good teams, you know. The yep. Wisconsin's of the world. The Iowa, Wisconsin they, game they was crushed. insane. Yeah, yeah, Iowa a couple times. Yep. So, so and then you have the last Michigan State game after they had already wrapped up the regular season cha- championship. Eli Brooks turns an ankle. He's their other leader, their other senior, and you yep. start worrying about how that's going to play out. And then, uh, you know, four days later, they start the Big Ten tournament, and he's suiting up and he's starting. And you're like, "All right, let's go, let's do it." And we're back, you know, we're back in in good back shape. Back in the and saddle, then, yeah. Back in the saddle, exactly. And then you find out later that night that Livers is in a walking boot and is out for that tournament. And, probably right. out for the NCAA tournament. It was such a huge blow to this team. Well, and because of that, you know, this is one team that a lot of people are saying they are the most vulnerable one seed, mm-hmm. and they could be vulnerable as early as round number two against an LSU team that's led by Cam Thomas, who's had 20 games with 20 points or more. A lot of people like this team. Do you think they are a problem? And then if they do get by them, there is another team there that people think could be a problem in the four seed Florida State. Uh, do they make it through and get to that Elite Eight? Talk maybe about both those teams. Can can they get past uh, both of those guys? Because there, there's a lot of people out there that say no. They they're going to go in the round of 32. Yeah, I, I'm not one of those that believes that. Um, LSU has got a couple of like first round NBA talents on their team and they can they can fill it up. They can score. You talked about Cam Thomas. He he was among the uh nation's league leaders in scoring, I believe twenty two a game or something. Um so they're gonna have their work cut out for them if that's who they play. And LSU's got no cakewalk in the eight nine game because St. Bonaventure's is a is a pretty solid mid major team too. So we'll see how that plays out. But if the if it is LSU, I see Michigan advance and I, I don't think they're gonna I think it's gonna be a tough game, but I think LSU has not been known to to guard people, and if if they if they're not you know committed on right. the defensive end, even without Isaiah Livers, they're going to have a hard time with Michigan because of their sets and their ability to shoot. And Hunter Dickinson down low, he's going to present a problem for just about anybody. So I see Michigan getting by LSU. Um, I actually don't have them matched up with Florida State in this week okay. sixteen. I have them against Colorado, but. Um, I, either way, I have them going to the Elite Eight. So I, I think they can it, – it's not going to be easy. And uh, I texted you right after the brackets were released, and I said I thought of all the one seeds, I thought their their um, their path was the most difficult. I think Gonzaga's is by far the easiest. Um, and they're the but, number one overall seed. So, and, and it makes yeah. sense. And Michigan looks like they were the number four overall seed. Um, so they which, get Alabama, which could have been a one. They were the fifth best team. So, yeah, they get the top number two in their bracket. Texas, as well, is red hot. Um, they're loaded. I, I want to bring up, you mentioned, okay, possibly Colorado, and I look at the Pac-12, and I'm like, eh. Yeah, and no, it's not a good league. But the, Florida the, the, State, top, the top three teams in, in the Pac-12 are, are pretty solid in, uh, in Oregon, 
USC and in Colorado. Um, so I think, I, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to break it down and tell you why I picked Colorado over Florida State. It was just kind of a more of a feeling. Well, that, uh, I'm not, that's State not what I'm times. getting at. What I'm getting at is Michigan should roll these teams. I, oh, right, right. I, I don't, I, and same thing with Florida State. I'm not scared of anybody in the ACC yeah, right yeah. now. Not no. this year. North Carolina's down. Virginia's in. Florida State, like, Clemson's in the tournament too. But, I, I mean, I'm not scared of any of these teams. No. Not at all. And, you know, Scotty Barnes is a good player. They got a couple of good dudes. They can uh, right. shoot the rock. They got a high uh, big-time offense from beyond the arc. But you go through and you look at, like, look at the ranked teams these guys have played. You know, I'm looking at Florida State's schedule right now. They barely beat Indiana, who just fired their head coach. They beat Florida. They beat Georgia Tech, who is a playoff team. They lose to UCF, okay? Then they played some team that I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what the abbreviation is. G-W-E-B. Am I missing something? Who is that? Gardner-Webb, no maybe? That, and that, part, that is who it is. That's who, that's yeah. who it is. They yeah. lose to Clemson. None of these are ranked teams, by the way. NC State, yeah. North Carolina was not ranked. Louisville not ranked. Clemson was. They win that game. I mean, none of the – Wake Forest, was Tim Duncan there? Where's Chris Paul? Like, they're not it's good anymore. Trash. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not – they lose to UNC, who has been playing much better lately. But, I mean, Notre Dame, they lose to Georgia Tech. I, I'm not – I'm not worried about Isn't it these crazy teams. how trash the ACC was this year? I it, mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, when you take out They're the darlings know, of ESPN every year, right? You know. Well, as they should be historically as they should with be, Duke right, and but, Carolina and then you add Virginia who's been great, but they they weren't this year. So, right. if Michigan can get to the Elite 8 and if that gives them whatever that is, two and a half weeks, if that's enough time for Isaiah's leg to get better. Um yeah, that could be something. Um, I mean, even if he could give them ten minutes and, a night off the bench, just just that yes. emotional lift. Because what it, what this does is it gives some other guys an opportunity to step in. You know, that next man up mantra. Brandon Johns Jr. in particular is a guy that doesn't play a ton of minutes in their normal lineup, but is a very skilled guy. He, he's a four star recruit uh, out of East Lansing, which in, right in Tom Izzo's backyard. Really good player, and he played great you know, against Ohio gonna, State. He did, and he's gonna get he's gonna get an opportunity to play a lot more minutes than he's accustomed to, and he's gonna have an opportunity to shine. And if he's a guy, and a guy like him can step up, and then a guy, a freshman like Terrence Williams the second can step into Johns's role, and you know, kind of scrap, play some defense, get some rebounds. Who knows? You know, maybe maybe they don't miss a beat. I mean, I, I'm I'm skeptical that that'll happen. It's just, it's so late in the season. If this would have happened in like late January, early February, you have some right. time to sort of get accustomed to your new lineup, but you're going into the tournament. That's is a whole nother story, but we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think you saw it a little bit. I think Shondi Brown probably played the worst game he has all year against Ohio state in that tournament game. And, and they, and the team collectively missed a ton of wide open threes. Yeah. Which you don't, yeah. They don't normally do. Yeah, Granted, Mike you know, Smith, you got livers usually shooting them, which he's, right. he shoots it at about 40, 42%. But Brooks is a is a really good shooter. He was missing them. Mike Smith was throwing up bricks. Smith and you talked Shawnee about Shawnee Shawnee Brown. Yeah, Smith and Shawnee combined for two – they made two shots between those two guys. If they are even one shot better, Michigan wins that game. So I, I don't think it is as dire as much as I said, well, they need him. Well, they do need him. They absolutely do need him. Um, but if they just play a hair better, I, I, don't, I think they can walk into the Elite Eight at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they can still walk into the Elite Eight. Okay, so that's it for the local teams right now. Um, we mentioned the Big Ten. Obviously, just a monster year. Two number one seeds, also two number two seeds. That never happens man big 10 two ones and two twos first time ever seven previous times the conference has had three of the top two seeds it's only happened seven other times the eventual champion only came from that conference three out of those seven times all by the ACC, which we talked about this year, was not as good. Um, that's what happens when you have Duke and Carolina 
in Virginia in your uh, in your uh, bracket there or in your conference. So we will see if the Big Ten ends its drought this year. It's hard to believe, man. It's been since the Flintstones that the Big Ten yep. has won, has won a championship, and it's they had two final like yeah, twenty one. Yeah, and they had two Final Four teams that year along with Wisconsin. So, uh, and you and I both have the other Big Ten teams going a long, long way. But before we get to those, everybody always wants to know about sleepers. Everybody wants to know about the upsets. And everybody always ends up picking way too many of them, especially those 5-12s. The consensus on a lot of these – People got a lot of the same teams. There's a couple hot ones out there. You got your Ohio's. You got your Winthrop's. You got your UC Santa Barbara's. Everybody likes. Do you like any of those? And uh, what other upsets do you have? And maybe a double-digit seed, Ryan, that you have going. And and I failed to mention this before. Michigan State would be one of those Mm double-digit seeds. Think about this while you're filling out your bracket here at the last second. 10 or lower, to advance to the second week of play. It has happened 33 times in 35 tournaments, including 12 straight Straight. since the field has gone to 64. 33 of 35 times, a 10 or lower double-digit seed has advanced to the Sweet 16. So you got to expect probably will happen again. It's just which one will it be? So who do you think maybe it'll be, Ryan? And then maybe some other upsets to look out for. Um, well, so I have one double-digit seed going all the way to the Elite Eight, and that is in the south bracket. Um, I have 11th seeded Utah State out of the Mountain West. Wow. I have them knocking off Texas Tech, a good Texas Tech team, not a great Texas Tech team, but a good Texas Tech team. I have them stopping uh, a high-powered Arkansas team, and that game I actually kind of I kind of studied that a little bit because Utah State is really good defensively, and Arkansas is really good offensively. Right. And, and I looked at Arkansas' schedule, and I, I kind of ran through it. They they ended up I think the end of the year twenty-two and five. They were fourteen and zero when they scored over eighty points, and only eight and five when they scored less. And I think they were even worse than that when they scored less than seventy. So I think Utah State's a team that can probably slow them down and, and make it a more grinded out, you know, possession by possession game. And I think that favors Utah State. And then I have um, I have them actually moving on to take on. I don't have them in the lead eight. I'm, I take that back. I have them to in the Sweet 16 and losing to Ohio State. Um, as far as a team, a sleeper team in the Elite Eight, not a double digit seed, but a six seed which when you start getting into the third and fourth rounds, they become the Cinderella. And uh, a six seed that I like out of the Midwest bracket is the uh, San Diego State Aztecs. Yeah. yeah. Coached by Brian Dutcher, a former um, assistant at Michigan back in the Fab Five days. Uh, I like them a lot. Um, I, I look for them to take care of Syracuse and that idiot Jim Beheim, And then I, I like them over uh, – <laughs> I like them over West Virginia who was – I think overseeded. I think Oklahoma State and West Virginia uh, should have been flip flopped by the committee. But yeah, you glad do? you brought that up. Did they just forget that Okie State beat them a couple times? There, I think, or I think right. I think Joel Lenardi said, "Did the committee's uh, cable go out during the uh, Big Twelve <laughs> tournament?" Or <laughs> yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah, so I I, I, th- I see him getting past Bob Huggins' crew and and moving on to the Sweet Sixteen, and then. A matchup with Houston, I think that could be an interesting matchup, um, and a six-two matchup. And I have San Diego State moving on from there as well. And before their uh, glass slipper gets shattered by the sledgehammer that is the top seed Illinois in that in that bracket. Um, and then the rest, as far as other double-digit seeds, I don't have many. I, I do have Winthrop. I you know you mentioned them. I do have them advancing over over Villanova, mostly just because. Colin Gillespie is out, right, and that's been a big loss for them. He yep. got hurt a couple of weeks ago, sprained him or um, torn MCL. So, and that's I don't 5-12 have twelve match up in the south. Yep. You mentioned uh, UCSB, the Gauchos. Um, I don't have them advancing, but I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should switch that because uh, I don't know. I, I I thought I looked. I watched Creighton 
just absolutely get mollywhopped by Georgetown. Yeah, they did. Uh, and I'd seen them a couple times before, not, you know, not a ton, but they look pretty solid. They can shoot it. They're a smart basketball team. So I thought, well, they'll get it together. And I actually had them going and beating Virginia in the second round and going to the Sweet 16. But now I'm starting to question that pick a little bit. So everybody's well, in Georgetown, on the Yeah, everybody – you got to watch those, though, because, you know, you hear a couple of people say, oh, I think this is going to happen, and then everybody and their brother thinks it's going to happen. Yeah. And, yep. and it doesn't. That said, a yep. couple of coaching things on both the games you just mentioned. Creighton has completely fallen apart, and they got they did they got straight mollywhopped by a thirteen and twelve Georgetown team, who now all of a sudden everybody is riding Patrick Ewing, all yeah. of a sudden like he's the greatest thing. The guy hasn't done crap mm-hmm. since he's been there, and he wins this tournament where teams are getting eliminated because they got COVID and whatnot, and he he plays a Creighton team that still ends up a five seed, but they have not been the same since uh, their coach made the plantation remark. They have not no. been the same. And, yeah, they did I make it to – I forgot about that too. Yeah, and so are they okay? Are they not? Is that media hype? Is that just Twitter hype? What is that? I'm not sure. But I know they got crushed the other day. I do know that. Then yes. for Villanova, another 5-12. And people just see that and they're like, oh, it's going to be an upset. And they see Winthrop's record 23-1. and one, And you're absolutely right. Colin Gillespie, without him, what are they? They are not the same team since then. They also had a COVID issue. My question is, are you really going to have Mr. J. Wright eliminated on day one? Oh, that's that's – that's fair. I mean, he's you know, a great coach. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You know, two championships in the last champ, three yeah. years or whatever it is. And I, mean, I just have a hard time. Yeah, and I know not every team's the same. And that that you could say the same thing. Izzo's never going to lose because he's yeah. Tom Izzo. Well, he, sure, sure. I mean, but, man, I, I don't know that I can bet against that guy. Um, no, nope, you know, that's fair. That's fair. So it's tough, man. It's very tough. But, yes, well, those are the ones. That you mentioned, uh, at. I like you mentioned the, oh. the double digit seeds though. Just real quick though, here's the here's the kicker. Like you, as you go through your bracket, um, you there are going to be double digit seeds that take out single digit seeds in the first round. But yeah. trying to figure out which ones there are or is is it's an uphill yeah. battle. A lot of times, you go it's crazy and you start shot. picking a bunch of them. You're you're going to have a whole bunch of red lines in your bracket right off the bat. Well, and that's the times, too. That's where you you need, if you lose, let's say the winner has 110 points in the tournament or whatever, you you got 109, you got 108. Well, that's because you picked too many upsets in the first round. Mm -hmm. That's what always ends up happening. The one I kind of like is the uh, 413 in the West, and it's Ohio over Virginia. Ohio out of the MAC. We have seen them upset a four seed before uh, around yeah, these parts in the University of Michigan. Uh, Jason Preston, man, you got to check this dude out. This guy is going to be an NBA player. Um, you know, his numbers aren't like the craziest thing you've ever seen, but straight across the board, 16 and a half, seven boards, seven assists, 41% from three. He grew like some extraordinary amount from uh, his senior year to college or whatever it was, he had zero offers, and then all of a sudden he grows a little bit. He goes here. This dude's going to be an NBA player now. And, uh, you know, Virginia has had some issues as well. So I I, I like that. They had to bow out of the ACC tournament. Yeah, they had to bow out of the ACC tournament as well. So that could mean nothing. They could be perfectly fine now. But uh, watch out for the Ohio Bobcats. As well, any other uh, anything on the upset alert or uh, any other teams? I like your San Diego State pick as well, and I do think West Virginia was overseeded as well. I agree with you there. That that could definitely happen. They they can stroke it. They can hit the three, and uh, if they get hot, look out. They could be in the Sweet Sixteen for sure. Possibly the Elite Eight. Yeah. The only th- other one I have another six seed in the West bracket. Um, I like USC over Kansas in the second round. Really? Okay. Um, yeah. I think uh, with with Evan Mobley, and uh, USC has been playing a little bit better. And 
I just I don't think it's I'm not really impressed with Kansas. I know they beat Baylor, but it wasn't the same Baylor team that we saw before the COVID pause either. So right. I, I just don't think that's one of Bill Self's better Kansas teams. But you know, we'll see. He might prove me wrong. Well, there was talk earlier in the year too that they, you know, they turned it around. But there was talk earlier in the year that they might not be in the tournament that they might go yeah. and obviously they pick things up but yeah uh possible future detroit piston evan mobley by the way if you have not stayed up late to see any of the pac-12 games you're looking at a big fella who is uh projected right now to be the number two pick in the draft he's a seven footer averaging 16 and a half eight and a half three blocks per game you know just just saying possible detroit. Putting it out there just saying. I, 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 might have to, I might have to learn a lot more about him in the coming months is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. We'll see what pick <laughs> happens. And hopefully it's one of either Cade Cunningham or Evan Mobley, you know, which would mean the Detroit Pistons got one of the top two picks in the draft. But you can't go wrong, I don't think, anyway, uh, with either of these dudes. So if you don't care about USC, at least watch it for this. And maybe you might see a dude you might be cheering for if you're uh, a Michigander watching this. Anyway, so let's move on, Ryan. Uh, we did the upsets. We did the sleepers. Now let's work on this bracket. How about you give us your Elite Eight and then give us who you got moving on to the Final Four. We will begin right up in the top corner, I think, as most everybody's has Gonzaga up there in the top left with the West bracket. What do you have for an Elite Eight? And uh, who you got going? I have uh, Gonzaga against Iowa, and uh, I have Gonzaga advancing. Um, the two teams met back in November or December. Gonzaga got the better room. I think Iowa is much improved since then, but I just don't think they have enough to, to knock off the Zags, and I think the Zags uh, advance to the Final Four. Yeah, I agree with that. I got the same exact thing. I, I wouldn't be shocked – if Iowa won that game, they, they have experience. They got some older guys there. Um, it would not shock me. But I, I can't pick against Gonzaga in that game. They just have too much. I got Gonzaga moving on to the Final Four as well. Now we move down to the East. Michigan, the number one seed. I think we both already said we have them in the Elite Eight. Can they get past the Elite Eight? as currently constructed, and who do you have them going up against? I uh, have them – so, well, first of all, just backtrack a little bit. I, I do have Michigan in the Elite Eight, and then you have, I have the Texas-Alabama matchup that everybody is kind of anticipating in the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. I think if Alabama wins that game, I think Michigan matches up really well with Alabama, and I think they can get to the Final Four if it's the Tide. Unfortunately, I think Texas is going to win, and I don't think that they match up as well with Texas because Texas has the size to match Michigan. And they're probably a little bit more athletic, and they're playing better, and they're healthy. So I've got the Longhorns beating Michigan, unfortunately. In the, I hope it doesn't happen that way. I want to, I want to go against my bracket, but um, my heart picks Michigan, but my brain picks Texas, so I have Texas moving on. Yeah, they, uh, you know, you mentioned Kansas and not a great Kansas team, but they beat Texas, beat them twice. Uh, they got a good backcourt. Yep, they beat them twice. They got a good backcourt. And you mentioned the two dudes up front. They got two dudes up front. Once again, ESPN says these are first round draft picks Greg Brown, Kai Jones. They and also we, have another one in Jericho Sims, who's 6'10 and has been in the program for about. Yes. I think it's, it's, 22 years old. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. And in so. when and you look at Dickinson and what he has done of late against guys who are uh, Kofi Coburn, first mm -hmm. and foremost, he got abused. And, you know, the last few weeks of the season, when Michigan went from, oh, my gosh, they are on the Gonzaga-Baylor level, now you got to put Michigan up there too. They're a national title contender. When that happened, he was rolling. They started slipping in the last couple of weeks, and it was because Dickinson couldn't stay on the court. He's, I mean, the guy's been in foul trouble. Now he played great in the loss in the Big Ten tournament, but uh, it worries me a little bit with those guys and being able to throw multiple guys at him. I wonder if he can stay on the court 
I don't like that matchup either, um, especially if Isaiah's not there. I, too, have Texas moving on to the final doesn't four. It seem, doesn't it seem like, even in, in, in addition to him having a hard time staying on the floor, doesn't it seem like he's – He's kind of rushing everything. He's anticipating that when he gets up on the post, that he's going to, you know, go to his left hand every time. <laughs> and well, and, and that's his move. But I mean, right. he just seems like he's rushing everything, and it just he's. I think he kind of hit that freshman wall. Um, he's still a great player, and he's still, you know, vital to their chances of yeah getting to the final four. But yeah, hopefully, um, you yeah, know, he can he can stay out of foul trouble in the tournament and uh, sort of get things turned around. Yeah, well, and I said it from the first game of the season, you know, when he wasn't starting yet. Um, And he came in the game, and the game completely changed, immediately changed. And I said it that day, I was like, well, it's only a matter of a game or two before, sorry, Austin, you're out. And Yeah, and Davis gets hurt. And and David, yeah. And and that was a blessing in disguise because yeah, then not it that it would have mattered. It was yeah, it was he was going to take it over anyway. But this entire team is run through him, and you can see when he's not out there, when he's not for long stretches, it, they're they're not the same at both ends of the floor because he he's an absolute rim protector. I mean, yep. Yep. dude can't yeah. jump more than two inches off the ground, but he he's so big and long, he finds a way to bother shots. Block shot. Look what he did against Luca Garza. Yeah, you know, he didn't get in foul trouble in that game and held Luca Garza to sixteen points on you know, horrible thirty five percent shooting. Yeah, if that, yeah, it was brutal. So and he made a couple threes. Otherwise, he would have been like down in the ten to ten to twelve range. So, absolutely. How about uh, other side in the South? We have not really mentioned the Baylor Bears. Uh, the number one seed out there. They lost two games late in the season, but they are still number one. The other team we have not mentioned. A lot of people seem to be down on these guys. Ohio State, yeah, they lost a ton of games down the stretch, but look at who they faced. I will once again say, how are you going to dog these guys when you look at who they lost to, and it's nothing but top three and five teams in the nation. And they are barely losing these games. I love the Ohio State Buckeyes in this bracket. What do you think in the South, Ryan? Well, once again, Ryan, we're in lockstep because I uh, I love Ohio State too, and, and I almost threw up in my mouth saying that out loud. But <laughs> they're a very good basketball team, yeah. And and they have a guy in Dwayne Washington who is an absolute stud, a killer out there, just makes big shot after big shot. Guy's got ice water in his veins. And he has carried that team along with EJ Liddell. And I I don't see why the tournament's going to change that. You know, I mean, they've gone through the toughest league in America and, you know, they, they almost won the conference tournament, took Illinois to overtime nobody's been touching Illinois lately and they took them to OT. So Mm -hmm. uh, they're battle tested and they're ready. And Baylor's just, they just haven't been the same since they come back from their COVID pause. They've had a couple of big wins, but they've also, you know, they, they lost uh, the game to Kansas and then they looked pretty bad in losing in their, their game, their semifinal game in the big 12 tournament to Oklahoma state. Um, Yeah. I, I think, I have Baylor and Ohio State matched up in the Elite Eight in this bracket, and I have Ohio State moving to the Final Four. Yeah, uh, this is the one. Again, Zag, I did the same thing. But then over here, I didn't even think twice. As soon as I saw this bracket, I go, Ohio State's going to win this bracket. Mm-hmm. I, and I could be completely wrong. I, you know, I could be underestimating Baylor. I could be overestimating, oh, they're not the same because they were 20-0 and 0 or whatever they were, and then they lost two games late. But I sit here and I watched every one of these Ohio State games. And I watched them barely lose all these games. They barely lose to Michigan, who was third in the country at that point. They then lose to Michigan State. Okay, you could say that was a bad loss at the time, but they lose by four points. They then lose to number nine, Iowa. Then they barely lose again to Illinois, which was number four at that point. Then they beat Minnesota, beat number 20, Purdue, beat Michigan, and then lose to Illinois, who everybody on earth thinks is is the hottest team in the country, and they only lose to them in overtime. Mm -hmm. 
I got no problem with any of those losses whatsoever. Yeah, you'd like to see him get over the hump on one of them, but uh, and, and they did against Michigan without Isaiah. But I, I think this team is going to the Final Four, no question in my mind. Yeah, and, and you know, to be fair, Baylor doesn't have a bad loss on their no. resume, either, and they only no. have two. So, you know, I don't want to slight Baylor. And I think that could be the game of the tournament. If, if those two teams match up in that regional final, that, yeah. that'll be a fun one to watch. They're going to yeah. light it up. Both teams shoot it really well from three. They got some inside presence. They play a little defense, but not a ton, you know. So it, that game could be well be in the 80s. It would be a fun game to watch. Um, but, yeah, I got the Buckeyes. Yeah, I just, lo- I just love that team, man. And like you said, Dwayne Washington – has been doing everything in his power to not let his team lose. I mean, he, he's been – and they have lost, but it ain't his fault. I mean, he has been incredible. So that takes us to the Midwest. We mentioned Illinois, who we have not talked about yet outside of what I just said. Hottest team in the country. Uh, everybody seems to be riding this team right now and probably well-deserved. They think they won the Big Ten regular season – because they played three more games in Michigan and they crushed Michigan. And then they go and they win the Big Ten tournament. Io DeSumo probably would have been the Big Ten player of the year. Um, you know, Garza might have had something to say about that had he not gotten hurt. Kofi Coburn and then you got Corbello as well. I mean, this team is loaded and they are hot as can be. Illinois and then Houston, a team not too many people know about, Calvin Sampson's team is your number two here. What do you got in the Elite Eight in the Final Four? Um, I have Illinois and San Diego State, as I mentioned earlier, in in the Elite Eight. Um, But before that, a potential Sweet 16 matchup, Io DeSunmu against Cade Cunningham, Illinois and Oklahoma State. How fun will that be? Yeah. Get that matchup. Yeah. uh, I I agree with you about Illinois. They're just – they don't have – any glaring weaknesses or any slight weaknesses from what I've seen. Um, anything can happen, obviously, in the tournament. And usually it, the team that everybody thinks is going to win most often doesn't seem to figure it out. But sometimes they do, and I just feel like this is the year that they will. I think Illinois is just uh, – they're just too strong, man. You know, Like you said, they got shooters. They got leaders. They got a, a go-to guy. They got a big guy that is – just an absolute beast. He's yeah, it's a truck. Jack 2.0. He's a tr- he's a Mac truck down there, and uh, and he's got a little touch around the rim too. Yeah, I mean, you know. So yeah, I, I think Illinois is primed to come out of this bracket. I think Oklahoma State will be their their toughest test if it if it plays out that way. Okay, okay, yeah, I like that. That'd be a great game in the Sweet 16. Okie State is the four seed, and again, Cade Cunningham. If you're watching this and you're not super into college basketball or you only get into it this time of year, the projected number one pick in the draft, point guard, once again, possible Detroit Piston coming in, depending on uh, what happened. He just had a great year. Um, So that would be in the Sweet 16. So this is crazy. We did not know this was going to happen. We did not talk about this other than that one text you mentioned when you said, I think Michigan's got a tough road. I'm like, eh, if they had livers, I think they'd roll. But that's all we talked about. We have the same exact Final Four because I, too, have Illinois coming out of here, which scares me because everybody and their brother has that. But uh, I, too, have Illinois matching up in an all-Big Ten Final Four. I believe that's the first time that has happened since we mentioned earlier. Uh, 2000, Flint Stones, Mateen Cleaves, Mo Beat, Charlie Bell – taking on Wisconsin, beat them for the fourth time that season. I think it's the first time that would happen since then. And then we do know what happened with Illinois back in 1989. The flying Illini got landed by uh, Glenn Rice. (laughs) Grounded. Grounded. There we go. Grounded. The flying Illini got grounded by – Don't forget uh, Sean Higgins with the big shot. Yes, Sean Higgins as well. Yes. And T. Mills. And the boys. So uh, in 1989, that also happened. So we both have those two, Ohio State, Gonzaga, and Texas. Um, Gonzaga, Texas, I'll just say straight out, I'm going to take Gonzaga into the Final Four. I don't want to harp too long. Uh, I'll have more to say later. I got Gonzaga. And again, 
I'm going to say Illinois takes out Ohio State again uh, for the third time this season, knocks them out. Now, Ohio State did beat them earlier on in the year. Uh, am I correct on that? Yeah, I think it, the game might have been in, in Champaign, too. I feel like that was a road win in January for the Buckeyes. Pull that up down here. Yeah, they beat them. I don't know the date, but it was 87 81. Uh, Buckeyes moved to 11 and 3 on the yep, year. This is game, before both of these. In, in Illinois on January 16th. Yep. Yeah, and this was before both of these teams really made their emergence. They were ranked 14th and 21st at that point. And then they really started rolling. But anyway, uh, I, I got an Illinois Gonzaga national championship game, which uh, again. I think there's quite a few people that have that. Not a not, little chalk there, but I, I, it, right now, these are the two best teams in the country. Agreed, 100%. I have the same. Um, Illinois, um, that would be their third win over Ohio State um, in four games. And I, Gonzaga's just too strong for Texas, I think. They, I mean – it should, it should be a good game, but I, I think uh, I think Gonzaga wins that, and I have Gonzaga in Illinois as well. You know, so we haven't talked a ton about Gonzaga, and a lot of people think this might be the best Gonzaga team that there is, best Gonzaga team they've ever had. Jalen Suggs is another guy who's going to be a contender to be a Detroit Piston, depending on where they pick. He's going to be a top five draft pick. They've got the West Coast Player of the Year as well, and, and it, they're just loaded. And Mark Few has been there. He knows what's going on. My problem is I'm huge on, like, odds. I think you always have to come to your level, no matter what it is. You, you got to come to your level at some point. And there is a reason why no team – has gone undefeated and won the national championship since 1976. There's a reason for that. It's because it's freaking impossible to win like 40 straight games. Now, this year with COVID, they will not need to win 40 straight games. Um, they will only need to win six more, and they are 26-0. and 0, So the, really, they'll only 32. need 32. I just find it hard to believe. I, I, if it happens, it happens, and God bless them. But we have seen it in the past. UNLV couldn't do it. Illinois couldn't do it. St. Joe's couldn't do it. You know, in playing in that conference as well, now they had a loaded regular season schedule or preseason, whatever you want to call it, pre-conference schedule. They tried to stack everybody up because they know they aren't going to see that much competition in their conference. So they tried to play Baylor. Obviously, that game got canceled. They had Auburn on there that was good last year. They had West Virginia. They had Iowa. They had Virginia, and they won those games. But that was a long time ago. You know, I, I just don't see it happening. I just don't. And, and here's the big issue that they run into because, yes, they, lo they front-loaded their schedule knowing that, their league is not strong, right? but you still have to play your league games. And the, those league games take up like two months. And so mm -hmm. while all the rest of the teams that are going to be vying for national championships, specifically Illinois and Ohio State, have run through a gauntlet of some just, just bears of schedules because their conferences are so good and the right. competition is so stiff, they're battle-tested. Gonzaga, you just can't – you just can't like – fake that you right. if you're playing the portland's and the S san francisco's of the world and pepperdine's and you're blowing them out by 40 every night i mean right how's well, that getting you ready for the ncaa tournament well and ryan and, and you're not exaggerating when you say that oh they're blowing them out by 40 every night they are they actually are let's take a look at their last few games so they played byu at byu and I don't know when this game was, but it was a while ago, okay? So it was like eight games ago. They win at 82-71. They then have a cancel game. They then play San Francisco 
without Bill Russell. They win 100 to 61. They then beat St. Mary's 87 65. <laughs> they then beat San Diego. This is unheard of in today's game, but they score 106 to 69. They then uh, in 89 75, 86 69. 78-55, and then the BYU game where they nearly lose, and they make this huge comeback and end up winning by 10 over BYU. You know, and we completely blew off BYU, mind you. Oh, yeah, Michigan State's going to beat them. Oh, yeah, this crummy Michigan mm -hmm. State team, oh, yeah, they're going to beat them. This is the only good game they've played in months, twice against BYU. Um. And they and barely won the second time. And if you look at some of these other teams besides Gonzaga and BYU in this conference, now we know why BYU is 20 and 6 or whatever their record is. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. That's why no one – we just blew off BYU that nearly knocked these dudes off. So, I don't shot know, shot like 70% from three in the first half and, you know, jumped right. out to a double-digit lead. Like – I, I think I told you one time I actually watched a little bit of that game and I was watching it and, and I shut it off at halftime because I knew BYU wasn't going to be able to keep up that kind of shooting and they were right. and Gonzaga was going to win the game and so when I checked my phone the next morning and saw that Gonzaga, you know, won it, I mean they didn't blow them out but I mean ten point wins a ten point win, yeah, I wasn't shocked. Well, and they were they were down nine with nine to go. And you do have to give them credit because then they scored 29 points yeah. in nine minutes. So this team can fill it up. But, man, I, I just look at what the Big Ten has done this season. And I look at what Illinois did to this Big Ten this season. And, I can't, and, I, and then I go with the odds that these dudes have to lose at some point. They're going to be 31-0 and 0 at that point. They're due. They're due to lose. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm you taking Illinois. Going to catch up to you. Yeah, I got Illinois winning the national championship. Same. Well, wow. <laughs> any any particular reason other than what you know the schedule? Um. No, I think that's the main thing. I just think that, like I said, I think it's hard to sort of flip flip the switch on and off you know what i mean yeah i just i just like illinois and, I, and honestly if they're matched up with any just about anybody else um i would pick gonzaga i just think illinois is probably the one team that's better right i now. i would agree with that yeah let's say you know take our other final four team let's say ohio state beats illinois and it, I, i'll take gonzaga all day over ohio state all day Yep. All day over. It'll be a shootout. It might be 115 mm -hmm. to 105, but that, <laughs> that'll be awesome. <laughs> Corey Kispert and Dwayne Washington will be trading yeah. bombs. One yeah, end. let's go. That would Maybe be incredible. Maybe we want to watch that one. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs Maybe. defense, right? Oh, that would be incredible, man. And, and any of these teams would be – I just – yeah, Illinois, there's something about that team, man. There's something about that team right now, and I, I got them. Anything else you want to hit on any other topic we didn't mention that you want to uh, say something about before we uh, say goodbye here? Um, the only thing I would say is it's interesting that, I mean, obviously this is a unique year because of COVID and, and everything, playing the entire tournament in, in one state, right. which could be another uh, advantage to the Big Ten teams because all the arenas they've been playing in all year and yep. the other teams haven't necessarily, but – I think so that, and then the other, you know, sort of unique thing about this tournament is no Duke, no Kentucky. I mean, yeah. Well, in been you know a long time since both of them. Were, it, <laughs> it's funny you mention that. The last time that Duke and Kentucky were not in the tournament the same year. Mark Few is going to love this one. 1976. 1976. Not that that has any factor at all into how this tournament's going to play out for Gonzaga, but it just so happens to be 1976, Duke and Kentucky. Last time, they were both not in it, and Indiana won it with an undefeated record. 
Quinn Buckner right. is not walking through that door. Just know that. <laughs> you want to you know something else? Now that I gave Mark Few happiness, I'm going to take it right back. It's been six years since the last time the number one overall seed reached the final four. Not just the championship, but the final four. And eight years since it won the championship. Sip on that wow. for a minute. Wow. Do you want to go back and pick Iowa? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. wow. That's pretty so crazy, Louis isn't it? So Louisville, who really didn't win the championship, was the last one to as a number one overall seed. And I don't, you know, the way these stats go, I don't know if that counts or if they right. just wipe that entire record out. I don't know how that works. So, yeah, it could be. Um, but we know the last tournament we had uh, was Duke. And it was Michigan State knocking them out in Washington, D.C. with Zion Williamson sending him home. Well, we appreciate it, buddy. And once again, we are going to do a couple of more of these. Uh, we didn't tease this at the beginning, but we'll tease it right now. We are going to put out this weekend our top five local NCAA tournament moments in the last 40 years. So we're going to cut it off where Magic and Larry Bird – National championship, the most watched game ever. That's pretty much an obvious number one. We're going to leave that out. We're going to go since then. Michigan, Michigan State, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan all get mentioned in the show. We're going to drop that. Each of our top five local moments tell some stories that go along with them and uh, where we were, what happened. I was at a ton of those games, so it's going to be real cool. And we are also going to do national best moments of all time a little bit later on in the tournament and who knows maybe one will happen this weekend that will jump in there who the heck knows so our top national moments are coming as well and maybe a little recap show after every round and uh let you know what's going on so stay tuned to the channel we'll have all that for you ryan appreciate your time brother Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Look forward to uh, doing some more, and hopefully we'll get a really exciting tournament. Yeah, no doubt. Pay attention to the channel. They'll be dropping all the way through up until the Final Four. Thanks, guys. And leave your comments. If you, if you got different picks, let us know. What's your Final Four? Drop them in the comments. 